one type of molecule that we will um, that we see in abundance in uh, the extracellular fluid and the cytoplasm within cells is proteins. And proteins are complex molecules that are made up of chains of amino acids. And I'm not going to get up into the biochemistry of amino acids, but there are um, dozens of different types of amino acids that we have in our body that make up these complex, larger complex molecules called proteins. Now the amino acids um, are, there are four different types of amino acids. Um, just like I was talking about in, the, in a recent video about the four different types of molecules within our body. There are cations, anions, polar, and nonpolar molecules. Um, there are, on, in amino acids, there are, are amino acids that have negative charges, there are anions. There are amino acids that have positive charges, they are cations. And then there are polar amino acids and nonpolar amino acids. And here I have some examples. Um, you can see there, lysine is an example of a cation with a positive charge. Glutamic acid is an example of an amino acid that is an anion with a negative charge. Tyrosine is an example of a neutral charged molecule that has a positive end and a negative end, or a polar molecule. And then glycine is a charge, is a uncharged, neutral charged molecule that does not have a polar end. Now, the fact that there are these four different types of molecules um, that make up these complex molecules called proteins um, causes them to sort of twist themselves into very complicated shapes. Now, if you look at, at this molecule over here on the right side of the screen, um, you can see that it is made up of many different types of amino acids, all represented by colors. And now remember, because of, the, because of electrostatic forces, um, different molecules are going to be attracted or repelled by other molecules within this long chain of a protein that's made up of the amino acids. So if you take this little amino acid here, um, at the bottom, this little red amino acid, this may be a cation, that is lysine, and it tends to be attracted to and tends to pull towards the, this um, anion that is across the way from it. And so the cations and the anions will tend to be attracted to each other even if they're not bound together in the chain, and this will cause it to sort of twist itself into specific shapes. So anions and cations will be attracted to each other. The positive end of a um, polar molecule will tend to be attracted to neg um, negative ends or, um, or negative charged particles. And so therefore the way that the chain of amino acids is put together will dictate its final shape because as the chains are put together, they sort of twist themselves naturally into a very specific shape based on the attractions, the electrostatic forces that cause the molecules to be attracted to each other. Now additionally, there are outside forces because this protein is dissolved in water, which is a polar molecule, and the polar molecules of water are also going to put um, put are going to exert force on the protein molecule and and also help to bend it into a specific shape. And this is because the um, the nonpolar or hydrophobic parts of the molecule are always going to try to twist themselves away from from the polar water molecule and push themselves away, whereas the um, polar parts, the polar amino acids within the protein structure are going to be tend, tend to be attracted to the water structure. So both the interactions of the electrostatic forces between molecules within the protein, the very complex protein molecule itself, and 
the electrostatic forces that are exerted from outside by the water molecules are going to cause the protein to twist itself into complex shapes.